Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to learn how to play the colorful tile placing game, Azul Summer Pavilion. This two to four player game designed by Michael Kissling and published by Next Move Games. Having been so pleased, the King of Portugal has uh, hired you once again to design his summer pavilion and tile it completely with a brand new mosaic. We, are you up to the task and will you succeed or fail and upset the king? Find out as we go to the table and learn how to play Azul Summer Pavilion. Each player chooses a player board in one player color and places it in front of them so that the side with the colored stars is face up. Place the factory displays in the circle around the center of the table. In a two-player game, place five factory displays. In a three-player game, place seven factory displays. In a four-player game, place nine factory displays. Since we're going to be playing a two-player game, we did five. Place the scoring board next to the factory displays. Put a round counter in the space for round one. The counter indicates not only the current round, but also the wild color for the round, which will be explained later in this video. In the first round, purple will be the wild color. Each player takes a scoring marker in their color and places it on the fifth space right here on the board around the scoring track. Fill the bag with the 132 tiles. This is what it looks like. Draw 10 tiles blindly from the bag and lay them out at random on the supply spaces shown in the center right here of the scoreboard, like so. Like so. Fill the factory displays with exactly four tiles each. Also drawn randomly from the bag. Like so. Put the bag aside for now. Place the start token in the center of the table. Place the tower between the factory displays and the scoring board. However, because it is so big, we're just going to put it off camera. Put the point tokens aside. They will be used during scoring. Return any unused player boards, scoring markers, and factory displays to the box. But since I like it, we'll just place it right here in the center of the scoreboard. And that completes the setup. You're now ready to get to work. Each round consists of the following phases. Phase 1, acquire tiles. Phase 2, play tiles and score points. Phase 3, prepare the next round. This phase is not needed in the last round. The youngest player begins and play proceeds clockwise order. Several turns will be played per round. In each round, one of the six tile colors is a wild color. The round track, down here, shows which round a color is considered wild. Tiles in that color are helpful in that round because they may be used to replace tiles of any other color. So round one is purple, two is green, three is orange, four is yellow, 
five is blue, and six is red. If you have taken tiles in the wild color, they can only be used as wild tiles in the current round. In subsequent rounds, the tiles in this color are no longer wild because the wild color changes every round. On your turn, you must pick tiles. To do so, you have two choices. Pick all tiles of the same color, which is not a wild color this round, from any one of the factory displays, and place them next to your player board. Move the remaining tiles from the factory display to the center of the table. So I would take all these orange, move them by my board, and then move these blue into the center. If there are one or more tiles of the wild color of the factory display, you must additionally take exactly one of these wilds. So for example, instead of taking these two oranges, I could take an orange but purple is the wild, so I would take the purple and the orange and move the other purple and the blue to the center. If there are only tiles of a wild color on the factory display you have chosen, you are only allowed to take one tile. But that is usually very rare, and I don't even have an example of that set up. It'd be weird to have all purple at, the at a time, but basically you can only pick one of the wild, which is purple, for this first round. Or pick all tiles of one color, which is not the wild color, in this round from the center of the table and place them next to your player board, just like you would do in the normal uh, center tile factories. If there are one or more tiles of the wild color in the center of the table, you must additionally take exactly one of these tiles. If there are only tiles of the wild color in the center of the table, you are only allowed to take one wild tile. If you are the first player in this round to pick tiles from the center of the table, like so, take the start player token, placing it next to your player board. Move your scoring marker backwards on the scoring track as many spaces as the number of tiles you have picked this turn, but no farther backward than space one. So since I took one color tile, oh, plus this wild, I go back one, two spaces. If your scoring marker is already on the first space, you may still pick tiles from the center of the table without having to move your scoring marker backward. The player who has the start token will be the first player to place their tiles on their board in phase two. They will start the following round. This gives them the advantage of choosing tiles from the factory displays first, according to the normal rules. After placing the tiles you have taken next to your player board, play proceeds to the next player in clockwise order. Phase one ends when all factory displays and the center of the table contain no more tiles, then continue with phase two. So for an example, let's say um, Jordan took these, I took these, then Jordan took an orange and a purple. Then I took a blue and a purple. And then Jordan took the two orange. Then I took the two yellow. Then Jordan took the two green and the purple. And that would be it of that round. The starting player begins when it's your turn. First check that you have the right number of tiles in the needed color next to your player board in a space. If you have enough tiles, then place exactly one of these tiles onto the corresponding space of your player board. Discard the other tiles that were needed into the tower. Play then proceeds to the next player in clockwise order. This process is represented until no player wishes to or is able to place more tiles. So, for example, let's say I wanted to place some tiles on this blue star, so I would place one here, that one's free. Then I would have to discard a blue tile to the tower and place the second one. Then I have to discard two. I don't have any, but I can use my wilds. And then Jordan would, would play, and then I would play, and so on, 
and so forth. If you have enough tiles, then place exactly one of these tiles onto the corresponding space of your player board, like I showed you. Discard the other tiles that were needed into the tower. Then play proceeds to the next player in clockwise order. This process is repeated until no player wishes to or is able to place more tiles. You may only place tiles from those which are next to your own player board. Tiles may only be placed on the diamond shaped spaces on your player board. Do not place tiles on the pillars or statues or windows. You may only place tiles on empty spaces. The spaces are arranged a star shape. The color of a star indicates which color tiles may be placed there. The numbers on the space indicate the total number of tiles which are needed to be collected before you may place one single tile on that space. All other tiles that were needed to play on this space must be discarded to the tower, just like I showed you previously. On the star in the center of the player board, there are no restrictions to where each colored tile may be placed, but all six tiles placed must be different colors. Tiles that you do not place during your turn should be kept next to your player board. So for example, I can place this orange tile right here for the center. The number system is pretty simple. One is free. If you want to place a tile on a two, you have to discard one. If you have to want to place one on three, you have to discard two. Four is three. Five is four. Six is five. If you do not have enough tiles, or you do not want to use all your tiles of the needed color, you may use tiles of the current wild color instead. In this case, you must have at least one tile of the color you want to place. All other needed tiles are then discarded to the tower. So, for example, Jordan wants to play one of her blue tiles, so she places it down. She then wants to place another blue tile, but she can't, so she will take a purple tile, take the tower, discard it to the tower, and place her blue tile on her board. For each tile that you placed on your board, you receive one point. Move your score marker one space forward on the scoring track. If you place a tile next to one or more connected tiles, you receive one point for each of these tiles. Only spaces that are next to one another on a star are counted as connected space. So for example, I place three blue, I get three points. I also place two yellow, and I get two yellow. And I placed an orange, so I also get one point as well. Jordan gets two, plus she would get at least one point for green, uh, two points for green, and three points for orange. The scoring track is continuous. If you pass 80 points, take a point token and lay it in front of you so that you can record your total number of points. An additional scoring bonus in the form of additional tiles from the supply spaces on the scoring board is received when, number one, you surround the four adjacent spaces of a pillar. So. If I had um, a tile here and a tile here, I have surrounded this pillar. So therefore, I get a little bit of a bonus, which is I get to take any one tile from here of my choice. So I would probably choose this yellow and then refill immediately. You surround the four adjacent spaces of a statue with tiles. You must then immediately take any two tiles of your choice. If available, these may both be wild tiles. And also, you surround the two adjacent spaces of a window with tiles. You must then immediately take three tiles of your choice if available. These may all be wild tiles. Place the bonus tiles you receive next to your player board as you would do normal tiles before the next player's turn. Fill up the empty supply spaces like we've already done here. On the scoring board, like I said, we've already done, with tiles from the bag. If the bag is empty, 
refill it with all the tiles contained within the tower and continue to fill the empty spaces. If you do not wish or cannot place tiles on your turn, you must pass. You may choose up to four tiles from those next to your player board to keep into the next round. Place these on the four spaces in the corners of your player board, like where Jordan placed her orange tile. You do not score points. Any other tiles you have left must be discarded into the tower, and you lose one point on the scoring track for each of these discarded tiles. You can no longer take turns this round. So for example, let's say I couldn't fit any more tiles on my board. Well, I have still one tile extra. I have to discard it and I lose one point. The preparation for the next round task is performed by the start player. If you have not yet reached round six, advance the round counter onto the next round in which you will start. If you are already in round six, then move directly to the end of the game. Fill up the factory displays with exactly four new tiles each, and we have already done that ahead of time. Taken randomly from the bag. If the bag is empty, refill it with all the tiles contained within the tower, and then continue to fill up the factory displays. In the rare case that the bag is empty and there are no more tiles in the tower, start the next round as usual even though all the factory displays could not be filled. Place the start player token back in the center of the table. Now all players move any tiles they have collected in the corners of their player boards, placing them next to the player board. The game ends after six rounds. Then players check to see if they meet the following goals and adjust their score marker accordingly. If you completed the multicolored star, which is the star in the center, you score 12 points. If you completed the red star, you score 14 points. The blue star, you score 15. The yellow star, which is down here, you score 16. The orange star, you score 17. Green is 18 points, and the purple gives you a whopping 20. All this scoring reference, if you get lost, can be found on the side of the main board. You also can score based off of numbers. So if you covered all of the ones on the stars, you get four points. And by that, I mean you need to cover all the ones on the multicolored star, the red, the blue, the yellow, the green, the purple, and the orange. Any fewer and you don't get that bonus point. Moving forward, if you covered all the twos, you score eight points. If you covered all the threes, you score 12 points, and all the fours, you score 16 points. Remember, you can place your tile on any number as long as you have the, the correct number of tiles to discard in order to place it on that space. You do not have to start at one. After the final round, if you have tiles on the spaces in the corners of your player board that you haven't used, discard them into the tower. You lose one point per tile. Whoever has the most points is the winner. In case of a tie, players share the victory. And that's all you need to know to play Azul Summer Pavilion. If you have any questions about this game, please put them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you really enjoyed this channel as a whole, click on that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified when we release a new video. If you are a really big fan of this channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter on this, pay on this uh, channel, of course. Uh, I want to thank our current Patreon supporters, as your help means everything. Be on the lookout for our upcoming gameplay video on Azul. But until then, thanks for the views. Thank you.